Alright everyone, it's me Joshua, aka Future Filmmaker 3 now for Isaiah here once again. And this is another ranking, but this time I've done this ranking twice, and I'm going to do updated ranking again, but this time I'm taking some notes from Sean Chandler, and I'm going to rank all nine theatrically released Star Wars movies under 10 minutes. And I would like to give a shout out to Sean Chandler talks about, he does reviews, rankings, top 10s, go check out his channel. You'll be glad you did, and let's get started with this ranking. This is my ranking. If you don't like the ranking, then comment your ranking down as we go through this. So let's get started. Let's see how long I can go for 10 minutes. So coming at number 9 is Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Madness. Now this is a prequel I do enjoy, but re-watching it more times, I still like the movie, but there are problems with the film. The CGI is dated, Jar Jar Binks is the most annoying character in the entire Star Wars universe, the dialogue is cringeworthy at times, it is overabundance on CGI, the Jedi scenes are not very good, and the midichlorians and political stuff just doesn't work for the film, but the acting and the music and the action sequences does make up for a average disappointing first prequel in the prequel trilogy. Coming in number 8 is Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Now, this is definitely the worst of the prequel trilogy, but I find some enjoyment in it. The acting is fine from Euro McGregor and some of the other cast members, including Samuel Jackson. The Jedi gets more to do this time around. Natalie Portman is great, and the locations, CGI, and special effects, and the action sequences are all great, and there's less Jar Jar. But the love dialogue and some of the cringeworthy love scenes with Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman doesn't 100% fit the movie, and it does result in a disappointing second installment in the prequel trilogy with some good elements in here. But Attack of the Clones is... A film I can watch despite its cringeworthy moments. Coming to number seven is The Empire Strikes Back. Now, I know a lot of people say it's the best Star Wars film ever, and I agree with that, but I don't think it's my favorite in the original trilogy. It is the weakest in the original trilogy. I do appreciate the darker tone. I do appreciate the introduction of Yoda. I do love the twist with Darth Vader, I am your father. I think that's a really great twist. I really enjoy that. That is pretty, pretty awesome, and... Everything else in this movie is just great, but the film does get a little slow, and the unaltered version of this movie is kind of a little bit a bit slot crazy, but the special editions of the original trilogy are the ones I do watch. But The Empire Strikes Back is a pretty entertaining film. At number 6, we have Star Wars Episode 3, The Revenge of the Sith. Easily the best of the Star Wars prequels. Love this movie. It's a lot of fun. It delivered on the promise that all the trailers and posters said that it would do. This is the very first PG-13 rated Star Wars movie. It did not play around. You get The emulation scene is intense. You see this is dark, it's violent, it's intense. The action in this film is great all the way around from Chewbacca's home planet attack, from the fight at the end, at the beginning of the movie, to the very last fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker. My only problem with this movie is that, again, some of the love dialogue is a little cringeworthy. There are some parts in the movie that I kind of feel like did not work. And the Order 66 sequence is too quick. And the fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue. But Hayden Christensen is really great. Great seeing Darth Vader. Great seeing Errol McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And Revenge of the Sith I think is a pretty satisfying end to the prequel trilogy. Despite its flaws, I think Revenge of the Sith is the best in the entire prequel trilogy, and that is for darn sure. 
Coming to number five is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now, despite some under usage of certain characters, an unexpected death of a certain character, which I won't spoil, a lack of vulnerability in the main girl, um, and some other problems I have with the movie, the movie still is a very good film in the sequel trilogy, even if it doesn't match the enjoyment factor I have with Rogue One and The Force Awakens. It has some good performances, it has some good acting, it has good action, and I can simply say that this is a pretty entertaining Star Wars film at best. It is a pretty underrated. Coming to number four is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. This the, is the first film in the anthology series, and yes, it does lack some character development. It does have some issues with the second act, and it does get a little slow. But Rogue One is a very awesome prequel to A New Hope. I love how we see Death Star plans. I like the take that Gareth Edwards took on it. The performances are great, especially from Felicity Jones. The music by Michael Giacchino is great. I love how the movie turns out. It does have flaws, like I said, but it is in no ways a bad movie as everyone would say it is. I do think there's a lot of enjoyment in Rogue One, and I think Rogue One deserved to make the money that it make, and it deserves the praise it got, because I think this is a really good movie. Coming to number three is the one that started the all theatrically and very first one to be released. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. This is the great start to a great franchise. George Lucas does great with the writing and directing. The way this movie looks is really good. It's a lot of memorable scenes in here. Darth Vader is an awesome villain. One of the best villains in this franchise. Um, besides General Grievous and the uh, villains from the prequels. Yeah. But this has a lot of great stuff. Mark Hamill, Cam Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford are amazing together. I do love C-3PO, R2-D2, and I love the music by John Williams. Best scenes in this movie is the sunset scene, the action, and the final act of this movie is the best act of the movie. I really have no complaints with this film. And the, the version I go to are the special editions with the original trilogy. Coming in number two is my favorite in the Star Wars prequels, Return of the Jedi. I know a lot of people like or hate this film, but I love everything about it. I love the Ewoks. Boba Fett is not dead. I'm sorry. I don't believe that. I like the lighter tone, I like the action, I love the final couple minutes of this movie with Luke and Vader and Han and the Ewoks fighting together. I love the, the opening of this movie, I love seeing Emperor Palpatine in full makeup, I love seeing Darth Vader save his son from getting killed by the Emperor, and those moments are just amazing to me, and that's why Return of the Jedi is my second favorite film. It's a lot to like in here. The 19 unaltered versions are good for the times, but they're dated. But again, I watched these special editions for Return, Return of the Jedi, and I will be having the, these movies on Blu-ray for my Blu-ray player i the beginning. And at number one, the best one in the Star Wars series is The Force Awakens. I know people are very divided towards this movie. People say it's a remake of A New Hope. People say it's not. But to me, I don't think it is a remake of A New Hope. I think this is basically A New Hope for a new generation. And Daisy Ridley is right. I love her. Ray is bae. Kylo Ren is an awesome villain. I don't care what anyone says. I love Finn. And I love BBA. I love every every single other characters in this movie. I love seeing the return of Han Solo and Princess Leia and Chewbacca and R2-D2 and C-3PO. The only main nitpick I have, which doesn't hurt the grade, is that Luke is in it for at least four seconds. And I'm happy they didn't do that with Henry Cavill's Superman. But I in Justice League, but I'm still 100% satisfied with J.J. Abrams did, and I think this is a really, really, really 
awesome movie. Is it's to me it's an underrated masterpiece. I don't have any issues with it. I think people just go to this movie and say it's bad because it's not what they wanted. If George Lucas would have directed the this original this new trilogy, these movies will just get the same kind of criticism the Star Wars prequels gotten. And I don't think this new trilogy deserves that kind of hate. It deserves more praise than hate with different directors directing well, these movies. That was my updated ranking for the Star Wars movies in 10 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your ranking is down below. Do you like my list? Do you not like it? I will see you guys in more videos, more 2017 character reviews. And if you like this, you can come here. We can have a good time. And tell me what is the most underrated one, the most overrated one. Which one is your surprising one? Which one is the disappointing one? Which is the best Star Wars movie? Which is the worst one for it? And, and if you want to see my other Star Wars videos, you can come here and on my channel and lot watch them and again go go check out sean chandler talks about because he was the one who inspired me to do this in less than 10 minutes so i appreciate you guys and bye